Big news, there are more homes for sale now than there have been in three years. Now, if you've been following our content for a little while, you know that last month we talked about how the market is unlocked. Are rates higher than they have been over the past dozen years? Absolutely. Are they as high as they were at the peak of rate increases last year? No, they've come down. Buyers, sellers, agents, vendors in this business are now able to predict the future at least six months out. And when we look at consumer indexes, that's what we're looking for. Is there a relative level of consumer confidence for about the next six months? And in 2024, which I've now coined as 2020 more, the answer is yes. Now we started to feel this uptick at the beginning of the year. In January, new listings increased by 3.1% over the prior month. Now 3.1% doesn't seem like a lot, but what that really means when we pull back the curtain is that in January, for the first time in nearly a year, the total number of listings nationally didn't decline. It actually increased, which showed the marketplace that it looks like sellers are actually starting to warm up to the idea of putting their homes on the market. And it's not like the market wasn't hot for sellers over the past couple of years. It was. Most sellers just didn't have anywhere to go. 90% of all home loans in the United States are under 5% interest rates. And so where do you go? The rental market is hot, the sales market is hot. You've got a great asset, but now people are looking at their mortgages like a financial asset instead of debt. And so they had no place to go until now. Now that rates have started to cool, now that more inventory has started to come on market, you're seeing the natural trajectory of buy side, sell side, supply and demand. Now it's interesting if you look at the numbers and the parts of the country which are pulling on these averages. For example, in Florida, we saw a 27% increase in new listings year over year. But in the Northeast, like the entirety of the Northeast, we saw an 8% decline in the number of listings. Now, why might that be? Well, if we look at home starts, even you know, if we look at our own firm, Sirhan, we look at new development that we're doing. You know, we just put the Mercedes-Benz residences on the market in Miami. That's a lot of new homes with new construction. There's more new construction in the state of Florida than there is in almost any other marketplace. So you have a lot of new homes and new land that's being purchased to build in Florida because of the influx of new residents that have moved to the state. And in the Northeast, there just isn't as much construction. Now you might be listening to me right now and saying, but Ryan, I just saw this article that was everywhere that said that there is buyer demand for 7.2 million homes that the United States doesn't have to sell. This is the worst it's ever been. And what I'll say to you is always pay attention to the body of the article and not just the headline, okay? That stat that was wildly quoted because it's a great headline piece and it's gonna get the clicks and it's gonna get those advertising dollars in those articles was taken from the fact that there were about 17.2 million households created over the past decade and only 10 million homes built. We could do hours and hours and hours of discussion as to how those two statistics don't necessarily completely line up. Does it take into account multifamily new construction? Does it take into account shared rental spaces? Does it take into account younger people not leaving home as early as they used to? Does it take into account what exactly is a household and do households necessarily mean new home purchases? Don't just believe every single headline. Is inventory still tight? Yes. There are in inventory challenges that still persist across the nation. The slight increase in inventory that we're talking about right now does not fully alleviate the market's supply constraints like we just talked about, but it does emphasize that there is a better balance that is coming into the marketplace in 2024. Now, what does that mean for all of us? On the buy side, more homes are coming to market. That's great, you have more opportunity. On the sell side, more homes are coming to market. That potentially could be great, or it could potentially signal incoming price flattening. We've had incredible price appreciation over the past couple years, but if more and more homes start to follow the trajectory that we're quoting you right now, that's gonna put pressure on home prices. And there's only so many buyers to go around, even though articles like to say that there's millions of people looking for homes every single day. Things are moving. And we definitely feel better today than we did this time one year ago. 
And remember, markets are defined in hindsight, so don't get left behind.